For those of us who live in the city, I think we can all empathize with that feeling when life is just a little bit too much and there's that pull to escape everything and go into the country. That is exactly what this next family has done, and with a lot of style, by building a special floating home. G'day Chris! Hey mate, how are you? Good mate, how are you doing? Good, good, good. It is so cool to be here and to see this incredible arc. What a unique building. It is indeed. So first of all, how did you actually come to be here on this property? Um, I guess we're just more Aucklanders deciding to get out of the rat race, selling up. We decided to um, leave Auckland, leave the city life. It's something we've dreamt of for a long time. And um, we just thought, what are we doing? Sitting here, getting stressed, traffic was awful, work yeah. was crap. We just hated it. And um, we've always wanted to do this. We talked about doing it when we were a young couple. Yeah. And we thought, right, bite the bullet. <laughs> put the house on the market and we want maybe 10 years to develop a property and then by that stage our young boy would be what 19, 20. Yeah, yeah. he can take over and run he, the place then. And yeah. we can retire and travel and do what we want to do. So um, yeah, we started searching and thought we were going to move to the Coromandel and that didn't work out because we had criteria Yeah. for our property. We wanted some pasture, we grow things, we wanted spring fed water which turned out to be this one yeah so yeah next thing you know we're signing on dotted lines and yeah yep yeah so we moved never up looked back <laughs> never looked back yeah and of course capitalizing on this incredible water feature you have built this floating home yeah yeah tell me a little bit about this and how it was constructed and why you decided to actually build a home that's floating purely by accident i guess that we ended up with this you've seen our tent so we're in the tent um, and that was going to be our first accommodation and we were started looking for something for us to live in because winter was coming, you know? And I think Karina was looking through Trade Me and come across Arc Design. And it was like, well, do we build something for ourselves or just bite the bullet and put the Arc on here and rent that out? So we contacted Anton and um, talked about it. He was telling us, I think they, they came up with the concept to get around council consent at the time. He said all he needed was uh, an area that was level and flat and then they'll just come up and they spend 10 days on site, that's all it takes, and build it. The big thing was getting the, the flat level area, because as you can imagine, it didn't look anything like what it looks like now. So I thought about it, I thought the best idea would be just to drain, drain the lake a bit, drain the level down, and then got a digger in, and then just cut this area. Yeah, they came up, started building it. Um, once it was built, then I just closed the tap, filled the lake back up, and she's floating, away we go. I haven't actually seen too many homes that are floating. Can you tell me a little bit about how this whole system actually works? It's on pontoons. Uh, well, we call them pontoons, but they're not actually. They're culverts that have just had ends welded onto them. So I think it's six big culverts all strapped together. What do you do for services when you're building in a place like this? Uh, is it totally off the grid here? It's Yeah, it's all solar powered. The wastewater is uh, a bilge pump, so very basic. Just uh, like a boat? It is. Oh, it is a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I really love what you've done here with this little deck area too. Yeah, the first thing I've ever built was, was this deck. So I'm lucky I was able to drain the lake a bit um, and then just dig the holes by hand for the posts, concrete them in and build this and then just raise the water back up and away we go. Well, the location is stunning and the arc looks brilliant from the outside. I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Come in. Thank you very much. It's so strange because everything looks like a normal cabin that would be built on the ground, but there is that ever so slightly gentle movement in it from the water, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. It is like being on a on a boat, I guess. You know the teak floors you get on a on a super yacht. Yeah. And I've got the black stripes. Yeah. So that was, that was the look I was going for. It definitely has that kind of finish, doesn't it? The floors are actually lovely, and you see that these are actually made from retaining wall yeah, timber. Yeah, it's retaining wall, 50 mil thick tongue and groove retaining wall timber. And so, what about all of the rest of the walls and everything? How is this all constructed? It's it's 
Well, the whole construction is plywood. It's got insulation in there, 20 mil thick poly, I think. It's so nice sort of having this open area because from here you've got your dining table and you've got the lounge and everywhere you are yep. inside this little cabin, everything is focused into that outside view, isn't it? Yeah, it's a stunning view. You know, it's just great, obviously, if you're just sitting here having something to eat or a glass of wine and cheese and crackers and just looking out over the water. Yeah, it's perfect. It's not just a, a sort of a sleeping cabin. This is a fully functioning home, isn't it? So we've got this yep. kitchenette over here. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, this was something we decided to do ourselves. Um, so the art does come with a kitchen, but we wanted something a little bit more upmarket. And uh, two burner, little gas hob there. And this is what I really liked, was the uh, plywood bench top. You know, spent a little bit of time looking for this, and I think, you know, that looks fantastic. It definitely looks really unique. I love the way that it's actually done on its end grain as well, which is quite different, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It is different, yeah. So how do you deal with the grey water here? The sink there, the sink in the bathroom, um, are all plumbed into the pipe underneath, and in there is a sump where I've got a bilge pump from the bilge pump that just pumps it through a hose back onto the land there into a tank, and then it's just dispersed out in the into the paddock. The rest of it's all uh, solar powered fridge. Fan is solar powered as well in the bathroom. And do you find that the energy that you're getting from the sun is enough to power everything that's required in here? Yeah, it is. Cool. What size solar system do you have? 200 watt panels on there going into a 200 amp hour battery and a controller all strapped on in there. And so it is the bathroom behind us, I'm it guessing? It is, it is. Can we check that out? Oh, again, this is really nice. When we're in a floating home, is this still called the bathroom or is it a head? Do we call it the bathroom? <laughs> Fair enough too. So you've got a composting toilet there. Yep. How's that working out? No problem at all. It's actually quite surprising. Uh, yeah, very easy. No smells, no nothing, it's good. One of the things that I like about this composting toilet as well is that you've got the extract fan going. So that just yeah. really helps to keep all the odor and everything to a minimum, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, it works, works fantastic. Wow. And the shower here as well, this is really nice. Yes, it is, it is, it's, it's great having a normal shower on the water. Absolutely, just have all of the comforts of home, but in a little floating cabin. Yep. And then upstairs you have your sleeping loft. We do, so we go and have a look. Yeah, how do you access that? Uh, we've got a set of stairs here, the epic stairs. Oh, very nice. This is such a good solution too because they're really nice and easy to use, but you can just completely get it out of the way when you need to, so you can just capitalize on having this whole empty downstairs space. Yeah, yeah, they work well like that. Well, should we go upstairs, have a look? Okay. Oh, this is so cozy. It is, yeah. I love all of the windows that you've got in here, actually sort of having the sort of boat themed round windows yeah. just really helps to tie in that kind of feeling that you're on the water, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah, yeah. The bed up here is just, again, really comfortable and really nice. What size bed is this? This is a uh, queen. I really like how you've created the floating bedside tables as oh, well, yeah, yeah. out of that same plywood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, had leftovers, obviously, so it was like, what else can I build? And you need, you know, bedside tables, but the area is not big enough for your normal bedside table. So it was like, oh, I'll just make some little shelves and hang them off the wall. So I did, just from the leftover bench top. Having looked through this cabin, it definitely feels very spacious. Do you know what the dimensions are? Uh, she's six meters by four meters. Definitely a good size, but still compact. Yeah, yeah. So as far as price goes, um, I think it was one of the better options on the market that we could see at the time. So all up 32,000 for the Ark. So having given up the rat race and moved to the country and pursuing your dreams, building a beautiful cabin on the lake like this and now sort of sharing it with B&Bs and living in a tent, <laughs> it's very, very different from what you were doing. Yep. But how are you finding that now? Loving it. We just love every minute here. Every morning you wake up and you don't have to get into your car and sitting on the motorway in traffic. The roosters wake you up most mornings. You know, and you get up and you feel like it and start pottering around in the garden or building something new. Yeah. It's great. 
The dream is to eventually have a two bedroom home. Two bedrooms. Yeah. I lo my kitchen's important. I do miss my kitchen. I miss, and I want a big pantry. I want a big walk in pantry because we will be bottling things and, you know, I want all that there. So, um, build a home eventually. But as we've found out now, we don't need, you don't need a big home. Our goal is eventually to be totally self-sufficient, off-grid. We want to plant our orchards and so in a few years we could be gathering all our fruit and veggies and yeah, I don't know, it's just a dream that we've always had and it's, it's a bit harder. Happen. It's starting <laughs> to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's starting to yeah. happen. So it's a 10 year goal. By 10 years time, I just hope that we have the property how we want it. Um, we'll get there's lots of learning. I think this journey has been great because we're learning at our age, learning new things. You know, we're not stagnant. We're not mm. caught up with what we were doing in Auckland. And it's nice to learn new things. Yep. Well, mate, I am incredibly impressed with what you've built here. I think this is Thank just you. a beautiful cabin on a really beautiful property. And I really look forward to seeing how you develop all of this in the future. Yeah, and awesome. coming yeah. back and maybe seeing some more fish in the pond next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hopefully they'll be a lot bigger. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you very much, yeah, mate. Excellent. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. What Karina and Chris have done here is something very special. This place has that very traditional cabin feeling, but being on the water gives it another dimension entirely. Their goal was to find a place where they could truly escape. And here, the city really does feel like it's a whole world away.